All right, let's see if we can wrap up this wiring harness video. Um, I was able to, I got my loom in, got it installed, and I got the uh, silicone on the back where the holes were in the PC and one of the pins that I pulled out. Got all that put back together and uh, we're good there. I was going to wait and do this wiring, the final wiring, you know, after I got the engine installed and that type of stuff. And uh, actually, let me make one point. I've uh, been meaning to, to talk about this and I've been asked a couple times. When I get done, this wiring harness is going to go in a bucket and I'm going to put it to the side. I'm not going to install it back on the engine. I know it'll fit on the engine because I didn't really change the configuration of it. I just pulled off some of the wires and some of the sensor connectors, right? So I know it'll go back on there. That's not the issue. Um, I don't want to put it on the engine because I'm going to be taking that engine in and out of this new swap and I don't want to d damage any of the wires. So it doesn't make sense to put it on. So I'll safely put it away and we'll put it on after the engine's installed for the final time. So that'll be that point. Um, the, all the dash, every, all the connectors and electrical, electronic devices that go in the dash that go to this type of connector, that I will wait and do that um, when we do the install for that. But I wanted to cover this video on, I'm going to go ahead and cover what these four wires, these are my power wires and what they're going to do. And the only reason I'm even doing this is I was inspired by a video by a guy I've been following just recently, a guy named Gary Garcia. And Gary put together a pretty neat video talking about the starter wire. And uh, you know when you put the key in, you put it uh, position, move it to position one. That's run, and then you put it to that spring load position. It's two. It's uh, two. That's the start position. And in his situation, he was going to use that technology they kind of got in the newer PCMs that allow you to. Um, and, and what way I read about it is, if you put it to start and hold it there for 0.4 seconds. You can let go of the starter and the computer's going to take over and it's going to start the engine. It's going to it's going to continue running the starter until one of two things happen. One is the engine starts and then it'll cut off. Uh, or a, a amount of time, and I guess that's configurable in the PC and how long you want it to continue to try. But anyway, I said, wow, that'd be kind of neat to put that functionality in this old Jeep. So I started looking into it and come to find out that's a functionality built into PCMs that are 2003 and, and newer. So this is from a 2001 model car, so I, it just doesn't have, in the PCM, it's not like it's something configurable, it just does that technology, or the, the programming for that doesn't exist. So I'm just not gonna do that. But it made me look at uh, and start thinking about these wires and what I'm gonna do to them. And I thought it'd be nice to go ahead and just include that. This video is gonna be not too long, but it's gonna be kind of in depth and kind of boring because I'm gonna do a lot of testing. And uh, so if you're not really doing a wiring swap, this may not be the video for you. So, um, but if you like to follow along, love you. Love for you to continue to follow along. And so I think what we'll do is we'll start. Um, I'll get rid of two of these wires. Uh, talking about them, this yellow wire is my uh, fuel pump wire. This is just go back down the chassis all the way back to the fuel pump, and it's, it provides power to the to the fuel pump. That's a simple wire. Um, this red wire here is the uh it goes straight to the battery though i'll have a little junction box or something i'll go with that but that's going to go straight to the battery it's this pink wire and this wire which on my diagram is the purple wire which are the two that uh, we're going to have to figure out how we're going to connect this and while i'm going to show you how i'm going to connect it in my swap which is a jeep cj7 uh, if you got a newer jeep or any kind of car you're putting this in a caprice classic or something whatever you're doing you're going to have to kind of figure this piece out. So I'm going to walk you through my my approach on how to figure out where we're going to figure out how to, where to tie these in. And um, and I think that approach, it can be used, reused for any kind of vehicle you got. So anyway, this pink wire is the one that needs to go to the ignition switch when the ignition switch is in run position. That's, posi that's from off to that first position's run. That's when this needs hot on it because that powers up the PCM. It provides power, ready power for you know the injectors and the coils and all that stuff and everything that, that is in run related to the engine. So we need to find a wire in the Jeep that is, uh, that is uh, positive. It's got a positive source when the key is in run. And then secondly is um, when that same key is put to the third position, which is start position, there's 12 volts hot on some wire in the Jeep that I want to connect then to this because this goes down to my starter and will start the engine. So we're going to do that. Now, the, the way I started is I actually found an old diagram. Here's a diagram, a wiring diagram of my Jeep. And um, I'm going to zoom in here just a minute, kind of walk you through this diagram. It looks cumbersome, but if you just divide it in little pieces, it, it's pretty simple stuff. Um, so give me just a second, I'll set up and we're going to kind of go through just real high level of how, how this whole starter thing and what I'm looking for when I get back to my Jeep. 
Okay, so here's a good look at, uh, I've kind of zoomed into a certain spot on my wiring diagram. And this is a good look at uh, just the components that we need to consider on this. First of all, I'm going to point out just the components. The first one is this, uh, here's the fuse block for the Jeep. Next is the ignition switch. And then this is the neutral safety switch. If you have a, a man, an automatic transmission, you're going to have a neutral safety switch. And here it's clear to say it's for manual transmissions. They got a little jumper. They just basically jumper and close that switch. So it's basically like the switch is not even there. Next thing is uh, here's the battery. Here's the starter solenoid, and here's the starter. Now, in most most vehicles nowadays, the starter solenoid and the starter are actually kind of like almost one year. They're next to each other. But this is located on the fender, and this is located down on the engine next to the flywheel. So um, they are just separated, but they're they're connected via wire. So let's walk through kind of what um, how this piece works and what we're looking for. Um, I know from, and I've studied this, I've highlighted this just to make it easier for uh everyone to kind of see. So here's the fuse blocks. I've got a yellow wire coming off the fuse block. Comes over and it supplies power to the ignition switch. If the ignition switch is in, let's call it position zero is where you can take the key out. That's where it's locked. If it's in position zero, nothing's happened. If you put it in position one, which is run or accessory, ACC, then what you're going to do is you're going to put power down this blue, what I've highlighted here in blue, if we trace it out here through this, here's the firewall, comes through that connector, comes out, it goes to um, a little connector here for the ignition box as well as it goes over and around to the starter solenoid. Now, realistically, that wire doesn't make sense to me. There's no reason the starter solenoid needs any kind of power that's run power. It only needs power when it gets to that start position, position three. So I'm a little confused as to why that's even there. In fact, I looked at a little bit, and this is for my year model, and uh, there's some of these for a later year model, and that wire is not there. So I think they realized later they didn't need it. I don't know. There's, there's always sometimes mistakes, or again, I may not understand it. So I'm not really worried about that. If you take the ignition switch and you put it uh, not just position zero, position one is is um, is accessory or run, and then position two is where you actually in that spring-loaded position um, to run the starter. That's when positive wire comes out here because I do have a manual transmission. That's jumpered, so it's, this is just a closed circuit. It's going to come follow this yellow line and come up to this side of the starter solenoid, and that's when it's going to activate the starter solenoid completing this circuit here and that way now my positive battery will come to here be connected that circuits completed it comes over to the starter and then the starter is locally grounded just by the fact that it's bolted to the engine that's where it's getting its ground and then it turns out I'm pretty sure that um, this starter solenoid is a, there's a metal bracket that it's mounted to that it's getting its ground here locally as well but uh, I want to go test this wire and this wire and see if um, if everything that I understand about the drawing uh, is true. If so, these might be the two wires that I need. I need one that's for run, and I need one for the start. That's my this is my little pink wire, and this is my what's on the diagram is purple. So let's go test that right there and see if we can configure that, make sure that's true. Here's the starter solenoid for this Jeep. It's located on the passenger fender wall, and then the starter obviously is down there. Here's the battery. The two wires that we're looking at really are these top two wires. These control the solenoid, whether the so it turns the solenoid on and off. The one, the wire that I had uh, listed in or highlighted in my diagram as with the orange highlighter is this baby blue wire. This is that 12 volt start wire that I'm hoping to be able to connect into. And then this red wire is the 12 volt run wire that I'm uh, also hoping to be able to use. So we're going to test, I'm just going to pull these off, we're going to test these for voltage and uh, make sure that is what these are doing. Because again, this red one doesn't make sense, but let's give those a test, I'll bring you in a little bit closer. Okay, so the black, red with the black tracer should be my 12 volt run. Let's stick this down in here and this on a negative ground. Alright, put it in run mode. Alright. Uh, huh, 6.2 2 volts, not 12 volts. That again, uh, not really sure what that is. Okay, so let's test our start one. So I'm going to put this in here. Get a good ground. Alright, push it to start mode. And there we're getting our 11.6. My battery may be a little dead, so um, 
that's what I'm expecting there. So, okay, so this one's good, and this one, I'm not sure what that all that means. What I'm going to do is I'm going to trace this back over to the driver's side of the firewall where it's coming through, and I'm going to see if I can intersect these wires over there, and we'll do some testing there. So let me, let me move to that side of the vehicle. Okay, so on this side, here is the ignition module. Had that highlighted on uh, the diagram, and then right over here is the, uh, the pass through the firewall. And this, according to the diagram, there was a there's a junction where that baby blue wire splits, goes over to the starter solenoid. But here it is coming into the starter um, ignition module. So I'm gonna test this again for that start. And then here's a red with a white tracer. And when I trace that back, that also is that other wire. So I'm gonna see if this is six volts or this is the 12 volts. So let me get this pulled off. Okay, so I got that disconnected. And, uh, here's those two wires. We want to test these things just like we did the other side, but this will be closer. And, and the PCM, this is where I'm going to put my PCM, so this will be real convenient. So let's give these two as well a test. Okay, so at this connector, that red and white wire, I'm going to get 11, almost 12 volts on that red and white wire in run mode. So that's going to be my run wire. That wire is going to go to the pink wire in my harness. And now let's swap this over to this other side. And now put it to start, Austin. Yep, and there's 12 volts on the start for that. So so bypass all that stuff over there on that starter solenoid. These, these are the two wires I'm looking for. Um, this red and white one will be my run, which is the pink wire on my harness. And this baby blue is going to go to what is purple listed on my diagram. So that's all I need there. All the rest of this stuff can go out. So that's pretty cool. I'm glad to have that resolved. Now i got that uh, all figured out. I'll go in and uh, show you that again one more time on the diagram. Okay, so here's that starter solenoid. We tested those two, and we got, for some reason, we got... You know, six volts on that one, but we got 12 volts in start on this one, which is what we expected. But if I drag that back this direction, it actually splits right out of this connector. It's, it goes here and goes up. It also comes down, up and over, and is this leg right here to that last connector we went to. So this, this is that baby blue start wire, which we wanted. And the same thing, this one's labeled red tracer, which is what this other red tracer, and if you come back down here, they actually, uh, there's a splice right here. Splice L is where um, this goes this way, but it also comes straight here and goes there. So these two wires are really the same as these two wires we were hunting down earlier. And I like using these. Number one, they got the voltage I need on them, but also they're right there next to where my PCM is going to be. So that is exactly where, what with the wires I'm going to use for that. So I now have those four wires all solved, and we're going to start moving forward. So until next time. We'll see you soon. Jack it up.